You crash on a desert island. Mm. What are the three items you would bring? I would take a bag of mushrooms to just... Voila, well, you said... Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. The fun kind of mushrooms? Of or? course. <laughs> of course. Hello, bonjour. I am Jean-Paul Gaultier. And I am here with... Haider. And we are here for a tête-à-tête -tête for dazed and confused. And I am very dazed and very confused too. And you? I'm very confused. <laughs> Terribly confused. You don't look like. <laughs> I think uh, that in what you do, you are at the same time very good in technique, like tailoring, doing like very nice shape, also sense of color, and also creativity. I remember that I saw one outfit that I said, oh my gosh, I should have loved to do it. You know, I think it was like, uh, like a kind of bomber, you know, which was like elongated, the zipper was elongated and doing like a frill, you know, like that, you know, and I loved it. I think it was beautiful. I said, oh, I didn't have that idea. <laughs> uh -huh. But bravo. Thank you so much. But I was always a very um, admirable of the audacity you had, mm -hmm. the audacity of your work and the lightness and the sense of humor. I'm a very heavy person. I'm very you well. don't look like at all, uh, no. <laughs> well, look at my way. In privacy, you are not at all. <laughs> but, no, but there is some lightness and, and sense of humor, which, and décalage and uh, légèreté, which I don't have. So I was very admirable of this. How do you feel like to, to, to design, for example, for Jean-Paul Gaultier? How do you approach that? Well, it's a very beautiful exercise in the first place. And the interesting part is like you dive into your archives and your archives are big. And, um, and there's a lot to be seen, so you digest everything and then basically you throw everything away because then it's place for your own story to tell. I think what we are trying to do here, every design that has been there, it's kind of a love letter to you. Mm -hmm. So it should be our own handwriting at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. This new story. It's like a love letter. I love mm -hmm. that uh, yeah. <laughs> term. It's great. Yeah. Thank you very much. The idea at the base was not like to have somebody that uh, make a copy of uh, Gaultier. Uh, it was not that. It was somebody that can bring something to the house, you know, like uh, uh, another flower, you know, to, res uh, to respect or not respect or destroy even what I have done. I don't care. It's why at the point I didn't uh, uh, take uh, some new, 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 new designer, you know. I wanted some that have already a, an image, you know, so it can be like, uh, you know, like uh, uh, something in common. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Not confrontation, but collaboration, uh, mm -hmm. honestly. Like, and it has at the end to be not Gaultier, not either. It has to be the function. It's like if we have a baby together. Oh, please, yes. <laughs> To be honest, I should ask you the question of which code you will do, but I don't well, want you, want you to, to ask you that question. I want to have surprise. You want to be surprised. So yes, so let's surprise, mister. Um, but, you know, the thing is like, we know so much about your work and we know so much about the craziness, the, fantas the fantasy. Perhaps there's been less seen about the immaculate tearing that you used to do in Dot Couture, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, about the purity, about the masculine, feminine, but in a very regular way. So, not to reveal too much, but that you might take that path. Very couture tight. Very couture. Yeah. Haute couture. That's great. I don't want to talk, to talk about the mood or the inspiration, but it's in search of this attitude and this grace what you used to give. With a kind of grande folie, because we need a grande folie in luxury. Otherwise, it would not be luxury. Don't you agree? I am completely excited because it's exactly that. All is about attitude. My question is like, how did you come across to do, uh, to choose, to have this idea of putting oh, designs on your brand? I mean, it's, it's very generous to do such a thing. But you know, I will tell you, that, I, that idea I had it long time ago. Before I worked for Pierre Cardin or after Jean Petou. Me, I have already my, uh, my house, you know, Jean-Paul Gaultier. And it was a moment where in 87, I think like Christian Lacroix left uh, right. Jean Patou right. and uh, he was doing his own collection. And I was thinking like maybe it should have been good if uh, Patou, where I work as assistant, you know, with Starladzi and Michel Goma before, uh, it should be good like if they were uh, taking maybe someone, you know, uh, each se uh, season, 
someone different, you know, because I should have love, for example, to make, not an, as, as an assistant, mm. but to make one the time, Claude Montaigne, I should have loved to make one couture collection for uh, Patou, uh, Claude Montaigne, Thierry Mugler, all the designer, Vivian Westwood, you know. So I was thinking about that, and I went to Patou to propose them, you know, to do that. And as soon as I told that idea, they said, too expensive, you know. <laughs> that is the French way to say to idea, to answer to idea, you know. It's a very positive French way. Bon. So, no. So that was in my mind, because I was thinking only about me. I should have been excited to make one time, one collection of couture, you know. Uh, it was funny because I love how did uh, Sakai, which, uh, which is Japanese, with the Japanese culture, how she brings what she brings, you know, how she interprets the thing. It was very interesting and I was surprised. I didn't say anything like do that, that, not at all. Complete freedom. Glenn, after, it was very nice and I loved it because, you know, it was truly a little something that I have in me, but uh, come on, it was more rigorous from A to Z, it was like in one line like that, you know, in the same way, which I love, because sometimes, you know, in my collection, I go there, and after there, and after there, you know, it's a little like that, you know. Olivier Roustin was like a, a, an homage. I think he was close to my spirit, but he did it in his own way, which it was more like, let's say, like uh, joyful, and mm -hmm. like all the, like, uh, let's say, positive part uh, that you can find sometime in my work. But it's very interesting exercise for us designers because oh. actually you reflect about even more about your own work. Right. Then you know you have more distance towards your work because right. you search for the uh, uh, at the end of the other designer. But at the same time you're closer to your work because you're questioning much more. But you know why I think I had that idea? Because I was exciting, uh, excited, like to do, I should have loved to do that for someone. I did for Hermès, for example. You did at for the Hermes. beginning, oh, Hermès right. was not at all, if I take 20 years or 30 years ago, I should never have thought to work for Hermès, you know? And after, it was funny. But that, you know why? Because I saw already Martin Margiela. Who, who did? did. Who did and I did. remember that when I saw Martin Margiela, who did uh, Hermès, I said, my God, it's completely the opposite, Martin, of Hermès in yeah. some way. And in reality, not. In reality, no. not. And he proved it because he did some fabulous thing, but in his way, you know. And after I was singing on me what I should have done. But and then <laughs> so you did. Funny. And then you did. Voila. Yeah. And it's but funny. it's interesting because it was so different than Martin. Right. It was two totally different worlds uh, while touching the core of what Hermès was. It's like liking to have challenge, like yeah. to make what I, what I will do for that house which has a style, which has already a type, which is specific, you know, how to, to make it in my way, you know, yeah. respecting also. It's a dialogue. It's exactly. a conversation. So it's, it's very exciting. It's like us now. It's, it's like a challenge. Exactly. Adventure. <laughs> Adventure. Exactement. What does haute couture mean for you? I mean, looking back at it and... I started my own in 76. At that time, the couture was down, down, completely. It was not at all in fashion. It was like all the new designer, like Montana, Mugler, that was coming, you know, after the Japanese, like Rekawa Kubo, Yoji, all those. Bon, it, it was like truly, in, couture was nothing, you know. Only Saint Laurent was still doing something in couture still at that time, but it, that was it, you know. Me, I started with couture, with Pierre Cardin, you know, because at that time, when I was 18, you know, there were no yet the big designer. Yeah, it was starting Kenzo, which changed a lot the true, code true, true. and bring a lot of things that were fabulous. So it was more exciting to see that than the couturier, to be honest. After I passed and I started to be like designer, uh, for uh, like the creator, like uh, Mugler and Montana, I was thinking, but it should be funny to make one time, maybe couture, uh, come on, uh, again, but in my way, in another way. Because uh, on, in reality, it was only the couture always exists, you know, because it's like something like, not only the question of luxuries, like to make, to order, yeah, not, you know, to make. Uh, sometime in fashion, all the show became like, uh, uh, very much like to make show and very funny show or very theatrical show, more shows and events and clothes. And sometimes it's good like for couture, which was like to make to for some people like very strict tailoring, you know, not like only extravaganza for a show. So it was a challenge to do that. Yeah. So it's why I was thinking maybe to make it like in the old way is why my first show I did it with like a, 
uh, you know, like no music, only I somebody know, saying I number see. one, uh, Taylor dress, da 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 da. It was like, amazing, you know. amazing. So, so I wanted in the old way, mm. but it was like a funny way, like to make the opposite of what mm. I wanted when I did my my first show, which were like truly like extravaganza. Which was 1994? 1997, 19... I did my first couture okay. collection. Well, my perspective on haute couture, I, I mean, I'm just starting. It's the first time I'm doing this. I'm going to talk about love again, but it feels like all these people are very passionate and they take the time and it's, mm. it's a focus and it's about millimeters. When I'm up in your ateliers and seeing all the girls working, it's quite amazing. The mm. time they take for each pleat and it's, lo it's just a love letter and I find it very, very beautiful. It's truly yeah. the artisanal, the yes. artwork, yes. how they are yeah. doing, and they love it. And they love it, they love it, and they take the time for it, which is a luxury nowadays, to take the time to do something. Uh, what, do we love, what do you love about fashion? For me, it's life, you know. It makes my heart beat fast, it excites me. It's a reflection of society, mm -hmm. which is very interesting, because when you go back to fashion books and you look at the history, you know exactly what politically happened in those mm -hmm. years, or what was the reaction on yeah. those governments. You, you, it reflects in the clothes. It is bad that also, because sometimes, you know, in, in the spirit of some people, what is fashion now, it's already uh, will be dead tomorrow, you know. You have to and eat. We'll, and we'll come back again. And we'll come back again. But that they don't, uh, they don't mm. want to know it. Yeah. They don't want to, they discover it afterwards. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that, honestly, it's an obligation that you have to destroy what you did before. Uh, to make a new thing, you know, it's like uh, it has to be like that. No, I think it can be evolution, evolving and making like. Uh, yeah, but what, what's a shame is that it's only that it's fragments. People forget times. Yeah. So, which was very interesting with diving in your archives, mm. that I've seen things which you did in 1994, mm. which is now high fashion nowadays. You must have seen it that sometimes your work has been taken off, copied, which is the biggest compliment you can yeah, have. Yeah, definitely. Which is a very good compliment. But how do you feel when you see it? I think it's nice. I think I love it in reality, it's a compliment. What I think is like sometimes when it's a copy or a plagia from other big designer, but complete plagia, I mean, that is not interesting and that is, mm. the plagia is made for the ones that want to make like a low budget clothes on like, you know, like uh, for something else. But other designer, it's a little uh, stupid. But to be influenced, everybody's influenced. Me, I've been influenced by, uh, by Saint Laurent, by also Cardin. Uh, Saint Laurent because he was reflecting the time, the changement, like sexuality, etc. So influence me in that way, you know. So, I mean, it's normal to be influenced. When I see other creation of other designer, I love it. I think so too. It lifts you up and it wants to make you forwards and onwards and upwards. But not at all. One time I thought like to be like a, a star of the music. Never. With a voice like me. Never, <laughs> never, never, never. So yes, it has been a, like a funny experience like to make out to do that. To be honest, I should not have imagined because I think very badly. In reality, it's why it was not even a song. It was some of my interview that was cut yes. by Tony Mansfield, cut, 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 cut like that. And we make the house music, house of couture music. So it was funny. What was funny, it was to work with Jean-Baptiste Modino for mm -hmm. the video. That was a great experience in some way. So there's not going to be a second single coming out? Not at all. It's better <laughs> for everyone. <laughs> For me, music has to be always to make me up, like vitamin, you know. When I was younger, it was like David Bowie. I was like a fan on like extravagant and extravagant. I love that. All, all, all the side of show, 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 show. I loved uh, Dua Lipa. You see, we are so the opposite of one another. It's, it's incredible. It's incredible. When I'm listening to you, I'm literally the opposite. I'm listening to this song, uh, which is called Baraye, which is an Iranian song. Uh -huh. uh, sung by this young uh, singer who is in Iran, and when all when it all started with the girls being mm. murdered in Iran, um, he sung a song about freedom for women, uh -huh. freedom to kiss whoever you want to kiss on the street, freedom for laughing, uh -huh. um, and it's this song Baraye, and it's on repeat the whole day, 
on my headphones. It's, it's a beautiful song. And you know, it's very interesting doing this haute couture and having this ode about women. We talk yeah, about yeah, women. Yeah, 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 so yeah. It's, it's, it's all related. So yeah, that's what's inspiring me at the moment. That's good. Okay, so what? we're going to throw it there now. Allez, alors, for a party, which person yeah. you will take? Well, we had dinner recently, just the two of us. It's true. Um, but it was but enough? It was enough. <laughs> we didn't, we didn't need anyone. <laughs> Only that, you know, very restrictive. You know, sometimes... We have enough with each other. We, we voilà, touch all subjects. Good, we, we talked about love, we talked about sex, we talked about... Exactement. When it starts a third one, mm, mm, we cannot say that, we cannot <laughs> say that. We have no less freedom. Maybe it's a long time ago, long time ago, I didn't uh, have dinner with Madonna. So maybe, yes. Oh, yeah. well, but she's funny sure. and great and always creative and I always love I'm her. I'm sure. I would do Helmut Berger. Ah, oui. It was incredible in Saint Laurent. You have seen that, the movie? Yes, yes. Incredible. incredible. It looks like Saint Laurent old. Exactly. Like, completely, completely. But I love his whole history. Yeah, I mean, the man had the man. most decadent life one could yeah, possibly imagine. Definitely. So, yes, he certainly would be a at the table. Idea. Yeah, he's still I mean, alive, I think. Well, we yeah. don't speak mm -hmm. about people. <laughs> he, he, he is, is still alive. He is, he is, is, still alive. Is, he is. So, after our dinner, mm. you crash on a desert island. Mm. What are the three items you would bring? Maybe somebody for sex, come on, let's say. Oh, yeah, I would take a lover immediately. Oh, yeah. Yes. And also some sweet. Food. Cakes. Cakes, cakes. You would take cakes. Cookies. <laughs> I would take a bag of mushrooms to just fuck Voila, it all up. you said. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Seps, it's a mushroom. Les sep. How do Les you sep. say that? Ouais. Les, sep. Les sep. You know that kind of mushroom, very delicious, you make in an omelette. Yeah, but I would take the magic mushrooms. By you, I understood. <laughs> we will share. We will make oh, an omelette. Me, I will make omelet. an omelette of that. <laughs> <laughs> we take, voilà. I bring you or you bring me. Okay. We do uh, that together, so we're what complimentary. About the, what about the sex and the lovers then? What's ah, but at that point, we have to pose a question. Okay. Maybe we take somebody <laughs> else or not. <laughs> Why not? Do you, do you believe in aliens? I think that there is so much alien in fashion that I have so, so many already <laughs> that I believe completely. How could Everybody believes in alien, no? Don't you? No I, I, no, I don't believe in aliens. I love my lonely world. Mm -hmm. No, no aliens there. But there are in, enough aliens in the fashion yeah. world, yeah. <laughs> we are surrounded by them, so why searching for them? Oh, maybe after you, I can ask to one alien to make my, my next couture show. Exactly. Ah, there you go, the there that's you the go. That's the next one. <laughs> <laughs> but we wait for you. Uh, let for me, fi let me finish first. Yeah, yeah. Let first January, we will see that afterwards. Well, Jean-Paul, it was absolutely fantastic to share this moment, this tête-à-tête. -tête. Great, but we have decided to make a lot of things together, no? Yes, Don't yes, we? we have a life ahead of us. Okay, now we do things kinky. Okay, okay off I go. <laughs> <laughs>